Hello everyone, it's Lucy and today we're going to be doing a roundup of some of my favourite that I've tried so far, affordable Japanese skincare products. Also, not that anyone asked, but I toned my hair the other night and it's like really dark right now. It has to be dark before it, you know, can fade to kind of like the more ashy tone I want. But yeah, just looking at it on the viewfinder, it's kind of like weeding me out. It's really dark. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here for the skincare goods, but I promise I will deliver. So I have like a bunch of products that I've kept aside. I have been testing these for a while, really marinating on them. Uh, and I feel like I'm finally ready to share my thoughts. So this video, I'm gonna be giving you my recommendations and mini reviews. I did also try a few products that I didn't really feel like I wanted to recommend, but those will be on my skincare spreadsheet. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put it in the link in the description box below. If you haven't seen it before, my skincare spreadsheet is basically what it sounds like in that it's a spreadsheet of all the different skincare that I have tested in the past and currently testing. I rate it, I sort it by brand, product type, and there's a whole bunch of Korean beauty, Japanese beauty, luxury, drugstore. It's like a whole thing. So yeah, I'll put that in the link down below. So specifically when I was picking up products that I wanted to test and recommend to you, I tried to pick up products that were all around 20 US dollars or less. And all of these should be available on YesStyle, who I do collaborate and work with quite frequently. I do feel like YesStyle has one of the best kind of widest ranges of J Beauty that you can get online. So even though I like to restock when I do get the chance to travel to Japan, I also know that YesStyle does have so many of those products available online. Which reminds me, when you see this, I will be away traveling. So if you do want to see a bunch of my travel content about Japan and South Korea coming up, then make sure to subscribe. So anyway, let's jump into these little reviews and recommendations. I will link everything in the description box down below, as well as including my code, which you can use to shop and save money on YesStyle. So first up, we have one of my personal favorites, which is the Hada Labo Gokujin Premium Lotion. This is one of my personal holy grail hydrating lotion slash serums, kind of depends on semantics. But this formula has seven different weights of hyaluronic acid in it. So for me, it's like the ultimate like plumping, juicy, hydrating serum. It's again, truly one of my favorites because these smaller molecules can kind of go down deeper into the deeper levels of your skin and plump there. And then the bigger molecules can kind of do that surface this level really dewy plumping. Some people may be familiar with the other Hard Lobo lotions. I'll pop a little picture up in here. They have like the white packaging. I've used those ones and I think they're like good, but I think this one is like much better for me personally. Like those ones I feel are a little bit more of like a lighter kind of like essence-y texture. This one is a little bit thicker, but I kind of feel like if we're gonna do it, you know, like let's just go, let's just go all in. Um, listen. I do wish the packaging was a little bit cuter because you know me, okay? I'm aesthetically minded, I'm a Libra. But the thing is, I will also always choose function over form because I really do feel like the juice is worth a squeeze with this one. You can also purchase refills for these products, which I think is really great and convenient. This one is actually empty, so I will refill it with this one. And I haven't used this in a while because I've been trying to test other things and just like seeing it again just reminds you of how much I miss it in my routine. Like it truly is a holy grail for me. I really, really, really recommend this one. Next up, we have this one from Lobo. This is the Shirajun Whitening Lotion, which again, clearly the same brand as before. Clearly I'm a fan of their lotions. Now, as I just said, this is from their whitening line, which to be clear is more of a brightening than like what I think a lot of us would perceive as whitening. It's more about reducing dark spots and reducing pigmentation and just kind of evening out the skin tone overall, which again, just semantics wise is sometimes referred to as whitening, but this is not a whitening product. It's like a brightening tone evening product, just to be very clear. This one has hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, and transexamic acid. So if you're like me and you suffer from kind of like the redness after blemishes, because I feel like for me, <laughs> the blemishes hang around for like, you know, 48, 72 kind of hours, like it's not that bad, but then like the actual spot from it after can hang around for a lot longer. And if that's sort of something that you're seeking to like address, then this could potentially be a good option. So dark spots, hyperpigmentation, acne scarring, that kind of thing. I feel like this works quite well for that. Again, I have fully tested all of these products and I've like moved on to testing other things, but I, I really miss this one <laughs> and the other Hard Lobo lotion. I really like using the gold one in the morning and then this one, the blue one at night. I feel like that's a really nice combo works for me. Again, you can get refills for these, which we like. There are multiple versions of the lotion. There's like a creamier, milkier one. I've only tried like the clear one. So I can't speak to like the differences with those other formulas, but I, I really like the clear one. So there you go. Speaking of other versions of the formula in the line, this is the Hada Lobo Shirajun Whitening Cream. Again, same deal with the whitening, not whitening, just kind of like brightening. It's 
semantics words. This has a kind of like medium, so like not super light, but not super heavy gel cream texture. I feel like most skin types would get along with this well, but for oilier skin types, you might prefer it as more of a nighttime formula. It's not like heavy or anything, but it's got like a little bit of weight to it. I, I tend to only use it at night. I don't know. I feel like it's worth mentioning. It's kind of like, I think it's a nighttime product for me personally. Again, it has the same main active ingredients as it does in the lotion. For me personally, I I do just prefer the lotion formula. I just notice its effects more and I feel like I can slot it more easily into my routine. But in saying that, I'm someone who doesn't mind doing multiple steps in a routine. So if you are looking for like a one and done, then you might maybe enjoy this more. It's like totally a personal preference thing. Then we have another one from Hada Lobo. I swear there are other brands in this video, but just the way I structured it, <laughs> they're all up the front. This is the Gokujin Hyaluronic Acid Face Foam. This one, <laughs> look, it's more of like a medium recommendation for me. I feel like I keep like hedging my recommendation so much, but it's just because of like the kind of consumer I am and like the way I like to do my skincare is very specific to me. And you'll see this on my skincare spreadsheet and things, but like basically <laughs> anything that I rate like a three and up, I would say most people would enjoy and like get along with. Like I think three and up is considered like good. It's just that I'm quite picky about what I give like four, 4.5 and five to, because to me those are like exciting or like things that I'm like keen to use because I think I only rated this like a three or like maybe a 3.5 which you'd be like why would you recommend this but basically like anything above like a three I'm like yeah it's like good like it it works and especially for like a price point as well like is it is it worth the money like anything three and up like I feel like yeah you're like kind of checking off like most of the boxes it's just that it's maybe not meeting like bonus criteria to my personal biases <laughs> does that make sense so for example with this one I think the price point is amazing you get a lot of bang for your buck I use this quite a lot and there's still so much left it's a super gentle formula like if you have sensitive skin and you just really need something super duper gentle to cleanse with then this is like perfect. It's also got like nice pump packaging and it comes out as like a little kind of creamy foam, which is nice. It's quite utilitarian. So if you prefer something that's like super simple, just like super brass tacks, like no frills skincare, this would be maybe something you'd really enjoy. And if anyone, you know, messaged me or if any of my friends asked me like, hey, I'm going to Japan or like I'm doing an online order and I want to get this like something affordable. It's going to last a really long time. That's like super gentle. What would you recommend? I would recommend this. Hadalabo in general, like check them out. They have so much good stuff. Okay, this one, I promise, is the last one from Hada Lobo. This is the Gokujun Oil Cleanser. This is a very nice, rich cleansing oil that gives a satisfying cleanse. Again, quite utilitarian, but I, I do quite like this one. I've used pretty much most of it up. With oil cleansers, I like one that's not too, like, thin and runny, because that's when it kind of, like, runs down your arms. This one's, like, thick enough that it doesn't, like, you know, go down your arms as you're like rubbing it in, which is nice. It's fragrance free, really nice big bottle, lasts quite a while. Um, I've been going through this for ages, I feel like, and it's still got a little bit left. Again, I don't know if I personally am gonna be like running back to this one. There's so many products I need to test, but that's cause like, I'm an internet skincare rat. I feel like we've got that. <laughs> I think we've got that point now, Lucy. I think we can, you know, but I just, I feel the need to justify. Like I just, I test a lot of stuff. So um, I do like this, but if I'm being honest, it's not like my top of all time. But again, if you're like not into skincare on like the same kind of, you know, rat level that I am where I have like an organized spreadsheet that I think you would enjoy this. And since we're on the topic of cleansing oils, uh, this brings me to the Softimo Speedy Cleansing Oil. So arguably this is not actually very dissimilar to the Hada Labo one, but uh, for some reason I, I like this one quite a bit more. It excites me a lot more. I don't really know why. It could potentially be the fact that I really think the pink and blue like pastel packaging is quite cute. I don't know, this one just ever so slightly takes my fancy just a little bit more. Uh, it's still unscented for those of you who are looking to avoid fragrance. This one does not have a fragrance. As I understand it, I do believe this oil cleanser is a bestseller and a bit of like a cult favorite and I, I do get why. It's just an excellent oil cleanser all around. Like it really does tick all the boxes, but I feel like this one has like a slightly thicker kind of texture to it. And it is just so effective at doing an oil cleanse and like getting rid of your makeup or your sunscreen or just like the general dirt and grime of the day. I just feel like compared to the last one, this one just has like a little bit more horsepower. It's just a lot faster at removing makeup, probably hence the speedy <laughs> in its name. But I think, I think they're both good in like their own way. And I do think there would be some people who like the other one more. 
This one does have mineral oil in it. So if that is something that you are sensitive to or want to avoid, then this one has mineral oil in it. Whereas the Harder Labo one does not. I find that uh, I've been using this as a cleansing oil. I really like it. I haven't had any issues as a result of it being a cleansing oil. It is formulated in a way where it does rinse off really nicely. So I think mineral oil is a little bit of a misunderstood ingredient. I won't get like super into it, but I also believe this is one of my friend's favorite cleansing oils. I know she totally loves it. And when I try it I was like I totally get why you love this it's like so effective it's so good so yeah next up we have this fun little guy which I actually picked up on my last trip to Japan it's a little pouch it is the Suisai Beauty Clear Powder I might not be pronouncing that correctly and that kind of goes for everything in this video so please forgive me I'm doing my best Suisai maybe Suisai no it's their Beauty Clear Powder Wash and this is another kind of powder enzyme wash so these are in little individual capsules. There's little things of powder in here and you just pour it into your hand, add a little bit of water, mix it up, and then it turns into like a nice creamy foam with a little bit of enzyme exfoliating, just a little bit of physical exfoliant depending on how much water you add in. I remember this being like recommended quite a few years ago, hence why I picked it up. I They still sell it. I feel like a little goes a long way with this. I feel like I only need half a capsule to like get a full face cleanse in. I will say it's a little more intense and a little bit stronger than my favorite powder wash, which is the Wish Trend Green Tea Powder Enzyme Cleanser. Yes, I'm a little bit biased because it's the one that's in my skincare box, but in my defense, it's in my skincare box because I like it, okay? Not the other way. Like I, I tried it and then it went in the box, so. But I quite like this. I don't love how they're individually packaged. I got the smallest option and that one is not super expensive, but in general, in terms of like the value and the fact that they're individually packaged, it's like, you know, as far as I know or remember, they don't sell this in just like a, you know, like a bottle where you can pull the powder out. They only sell them in like the little capsules, which I don't love. I just wish there was like a non single use option for this, but also this little pouch, I believe it's around like 15 to 17 US dollars. And again, I would say you can get like two uses out of each little pod, but like compared to buying a bottle of cleanser, I don't know if this offers amazing value. In saying that though, I don't really treat this like a regular cleanser, but more of a kind of like exfoliating treatment kind of cleanser that I would use maybe like twice a week for me, maybe less if you are more sensitive, maybe more if you have higher tolerance. And I actually also quite like these for travel because I tend not to take like full size exfoliating sort of products with me. If you are staying overnight somewhere, if you're going on like a little weekend trip, sleeping over with a cutie, you know, this would be like a nice thing to have with you because you don't have to take like a full bottle of cleanser. It's not liquid, it's not gonna leak. So there's practical elements of this I enjoy. I feel like I'm harping on a little bit about it. <laughs> it's like, I like it for a specific reason and I think it's like a good product but it has some you know pr pros and cons as all things do. Next up we have the Chifure Moisture Gel and I really like it because they seem to do like different seasonal packaging or like collaborations with photographers and designers and stuff for like different designs. So this one's like a cute little like I don't know illustration of like a desk and like a table. I don't know it's cute. I'm not sure if this is discussed a lot and I've just missed it but I'm here to hype this up. I feel like this one is really under it's a really great moisturizer. It's very simple. It's an unfragranced moisturizing gel. It's really hydrating. And I feel like, again, if you are sensitive and you just want something really simple, then I think this one will really do it for you. It's lightweight and it really sinks into the skin quickly, but it doesn't sink in like too quickly that it's like, you didn't put anything on, like there's substance there. Plumps up the skin. Um, if you are on the drier, drier side, you might want to like layer this with some other products. So putting some hydrating serums underneath, but I do feel like this also works well with products. It's not finicky. It's like, it gets along well with the team. It's a really lovely moisturizer. I just, I just wish it was in a tube because you get quite a sizable amount of the gel in this jar. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm a hygienic kind of gal. Uh, I, it's only me using this moisturizer. So I'm not like, you know, super fussy about it. I do use Use my fingers, um, clean fingers. But I just feel like with all jar packaging, even if you are, you know, being careful and using it, I feel like once you get to like the bottom bit, it gets a little, uh, you know. I do feel like there are so many formulas of moisturizer where I'm like, you could put this in a tube consider it. I don't, I think with like a tube with like a little bit of a wide opening, you know, I don't think we're going to have any problems. I get why brands like the jar packaging. 
I just think, you know, I think we could all be a little bit more open to tubes. I think we could embrace them and they're very convenient. I like a tube, I do. So those are my musings on that, um, but I do really like this one and I am about to head to Japan and I am very much contemplating picking up another one because it is a really great price point. And at least if not for me, um, I'm gonna be there with my mum for a bit of it. So I am going to encourage my mum to pick this up because I feel like she would like it as well. <laughs> and then we have it, this one, which I had seen Calm recommended. It's the Sana Soy Milk Wrinkle Care Night Cream. It's a little bit heavier. It's a little bit more on the creamy side, like the thicker side, like I can turn it upside down and it's not gonna gloop out like some, you know, moisture gel creams might. It's, uh, it's not moving. It's a thick and creamy, almost balm-like formula. It's like bordering on balm. It's formulated with soy milk and retinol. And I'll be honest, I like kind of forgot while I was testing it that it had retinol formulated into it. I remember that it was like a night cream and I remembered that it was like soy milk, but I, I forgot about the retinol part when I was testing it. And I would partly say that it's because it's a really, really gentle formulation of retinol, at least to me, like I just, I didn't notice the retinol effects as I tend to do when I'm using like a dedicated retinol product, serum, whatever. I've used products where I feel like the retinol, you know, the next day I'm like, okay, well that like obviously is doing something or even just like in using it, you know, with retinol, you do have to sometimes be careful because they can dry out your skin. But in saying that I do have quite a good tolerance for retinol. So it's not me being like, oh my gosh, there's retinol in it, but it's like nothing. Like if you're sensitive to retinol, I wouldn't, you know, still be careful and cautious and patch test and all those good things. But I do think from testing it and trying it because it's also in this very moisturizing formulation, I do think it would be a good one for retinol newbies or people who are a little bit more, you know, tentative about retinol. Maybe this one could be like a nice entry point. The formula and the way it feels, it's a very creamy, thick, texture so as a dehydrated kind of dry in the winter girly I, I don't need much other than this because it's quite like full-on I feel like oily types unless you're into like slugging in the evening you, you might not vibe this it's pretty creamy it has that really like luxurious creamy feeling but without the luxury price point then we have the Sana Soy Milk Eye Cream. I don't have a lot extra to say about this because this is kind of like the eye cream formulation of the night cream. It's from the same line. They're meant to be kind of like companions. And I know a lot of people who are interested in, you know, fine lines around the eyes um, do look for retinol products. I just have to be honest. Um, I'm not a massive eye cream girly. I have tested this. I have tried it. I do like the formula. I do like how it feels. I have no complaints, but I just can't speak to it as someone who has tried lots and lots of eye creams as much as I can as someone you know talking about cleansers or something like that like I just I'm in my mid-20s eye creams are not something that have really excited me I use this under my eyes and I didn't have any irritation at all which you know if you're worried about that with retinol that that's my experience um didn't have any issues at all with that is that a good endorsement is that a glowing endorsement I, I don't know I'm just telling you that it's a good it seems good to me but I'm no eye cream expert there are other things that I feel like I know more about then I would love to talk about some sunscreens. I cannot talk at length about sunscreens due to some Australian regulations. So if you are curious as to why I sound stilted and weird in this next section, number one, I'm doing a bit because it's funny, but number two, it's like a whole thing. Uh, feel free to check it out and look it up. Australian sunscreen regulations thing. But I can show you these ones and I can tell you what they are, the details of them, and just know that they are in this video and they are on the spreadsheet. So contextually, Yep. So this is the Can Make Mermaid sunscreen. It, I have this in the clear formula and I have also purchased this myself multiple times. And they describe it as a watery gel formula that serves as a moisturizing makeup base with UV protection. It has SPF 50 PA quadruple plus. It's a chemical formula, but keep in mind um, if you are Australian, any sunscreens we buy from overseas that are not made in Australia or going through Australian sunscreen regulations are gonna be a little bit different and not necessarily going to have the same effect that they do on the tube. We have a whole the ozone layer so just please be careful then we have the kiss me mummy <laughs> that just cracks me up this is the kiss me mummy uv mild gel this is a gel chemical sunscreen formula with uva and uvb protection it is a moisturizing formula that has a dewy finish and it comes in a pump um, and it has no alcohol or fragrance and it also looks like a teddy bear oh i realized i did not make any notes about lip balms <laughs> even though i do really like uh, a lot of 
J Beauty lip balms that I've used. I'm just gonna name a couple off the top of my head because I feel like they're all pretty good. My favorite, I think, is the DHC lip cream. Put a picture in. I love that one. I literally was just finishing off one in the office. It's like empty. The Melty Cream range, I believe it's called, have really nice flavored ones. They have like a matcha one, which I have and quite like. No others like immediately spring to mind, which probably means they're not worth recommending. So that's my lip balm portion. And let's top the video up. Let's like wrap it up with a few sheet mask recommendations. I have tested this box. This is from Crazy. This is their Hard to Be Say 3D sheet mask. One box only has four. Um, so they're a little bit pricier than like typically what you expect per sheet mask. Like it's three to four dollars per sheet mask as opposed to like, you know, one to two. But these ones are quite unique. And I don't know if you can kind of see on the box that they're like a 3D one in that that doesn't add anything does it me saying it's 3d what does that add but they actually the way they're cut it has a piece that like goes under your neck and like comes all the way up here so you're actually getting like your whole face and your neck my boyfriend max and i sat and did them while we watched succession the other night and really enjoyed them and i've used it again as well myself they're just like a little bit more premium in feel than your average sheet mask again if you are traveling to japan i think this makes for like a nice gift to bring back for someone um who you know is into sheet masks or skincare i got this this is the moisturizing version but i think there's a couple of other ones Ones. They're nice in terms of, yeah, the, the construction of them. The essence I don't think is like super standout to me personally, but I do still think they are like worth a go. But I really liked the neck thing. I thought that was like a real standout element of it. But I will show you my favorite sheet mask line that I have tried so far from Japan. And these are the Lululun brand. You'll find these a lot in Don Quixote's or Matsumoto Kyoshi's, any kind of big drugstore chain. I feel like I see these all around. Um, so they're not scarce. Don't be worried if you like, you won't need to go hunting for them, if you know what I mean. Like they'll just be, you will find them, I think. And again, it's sort of hard because it's like a bit shiny, but I think the packaging is really cute. It has these like little eyelashes on it. This is the Kyoto variation. So they did like a line a while back that were like based on different like areas of Japan. So I thought that was quite cute and they used different ingredients. So this one had Kyoto Uji green tea. I don't know, I think it's like cute. Again, I think these make for really great souvenirs or gifts, but I actually think the product is really good as well. Oh, and I didn't even mention the best part. These are actually like a multi-pack. So it's one like resealable kind of sachet uh, and there's seven sheet masks inside. So it's really, really nice value. I like, again, even though sheet masks are single use, I like that we're not getting seven different pouches. We have the one, I think that's like a good idea. And there's so much essence in there and it's such a nice, like creamy, rich, like milky essence that they don't stick together. And I believe the majority of these, if not all of them are fragrance free and they say they don't contain mineral oil or alcohol. So if you do have any sensitivities to that in your skincare, I really like these. I'm really excited to see kind of what seasonal ones they'll have when I go this time, which as you're watching this, I may have already been and gone or will be there still. Don't know exactly, but I just think these are really good. And I would recommend kind of anything from the Lululemon line. I don't know if they still have these ones, but I'll link you to the kind of page with all of the different varieties because there are so many. They have other skincare products in their line. Like I believe they have moisturizers and like have kind of extended the range. They seem to be primarily a sheet mask brand and now they've like expanded. Can't speak to the other products, but I can definitely say that I really, really like the sheet masks and I think they're really great value for money. Good time all around love these sheet masks. And with that, we have come to the end of this little roundup of affordable Japanese skincare products. So everything I just showed you should be under 20 US dollars. Um, and again, if you are traveling to Japan, they will be even more affordable, most likely. Let me know if you've tried any of these things before, or if you're keen to check any of them out, or even leave your own recommendations for affordable Japanese skincare below, or even potentially the not as affordable stuff, because I definitely would be interested in diving more into like the mid-range stuff, but I just wanted to make sure I had a basis across kind of like the more affordable stuff. And as you can see, you can get really, really great stuff um, at a really nice price point within the world of J-Beauty. But you know, as like a skincare person, I'm kind of like, well, this is all really good. So like, what's like the fancier stuff like? I don't know. <laughs> so let me know if you would like to see more roundups like this, if you'd like me to test out some kind of more mid-price like department store kind of range stuff as well, I would be very keen to. I'm also happy to do makeup recommendations because I do have quite a few J-Beauty makeup recommendations. Again, I can do some affordable ones. I can do some more pricey ones. I can even do a mix. Let me know. So let me know uh, and I'll, you know, 
start marinating. <laughs> Use my brain, have a little think about it. I hope this video was handy and helpful. Um, and if you're heading to Japan soon, I hope this gave you some ideas of what you should maybe stock up on when you go shopping. I know these videos aren't like the most like banging popular videos on my channel, but I do hope they can just sit here, you know, for the foreseeable future and be like a nice kind of evergreen resource for people. So <laughs> as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.